Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers from the Works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject is Tapasya, Part 4, from Sri Aurobindo. Yoga is an endeavor, a tapasya. It can cease to be so only when one surrenders sincerely to a higher action and keeps the surrender and makes it complete. It is not a fantasia, devoid of all reason and coherence or a mere miracle. It has its laws and conditions and I do not see how you can demand of the divine to do everything by a violent miracle. When the will and energy are concentrated and used to control the mind, vital and physical, and change them or to bring down the higher consciousness or for any other yogic purpose or high purpose, that is called tapasya. Tapasya has predominated in your sadhana, for you have a fervor an active energy which predisposes you to that. No way is entirely easy and in that of surrender the difficulty is to make a true and complete surrender. Once it is made, it certainly makes things easier. Not that things are all done in no time or that there are no difficulties, but there is an assurance, a support, an absence of tension which gives the consciousness rest as well as strength and freedom from the worst forms of resistance. Yes, of course you are right. The process of surrender is itself a tapasya. Not only so, but in fact a double process of tapasya an increasing surrender persists for a long time even when the surrender has fairly well begun. But a time comes when one feels the presence and the force constantly and more and more feels that that is doing everything so that the worst difficulties cannot disturb this sense and personal effort is no longer necessary, hardly even possible. That is the sign of the full surrender of the nature into the hands of the divine. There are some who take this position in faith even before there is this experience, and if the bhakti and the faith are strong, it carries them through till the experience is there. But all cannot take this position from the beginning, and for some it would be dangerous since they might put themselves into the hand of a wrong force, thinking it to be the divine. For most, it is necessary to grow through tapasya into surrender. Yes, if there is the sense of the divine will behind all the tapasya and receiving it and bestowing the fruit, it is at least a first form of surrender. Your experience about the meditation is common enough. I used to have it or analogous things hundreds of times. I suppose it is to teach us first that grace is more effective than tapasya, and secondly, that either equanimity or a cheerful, spontaneous, happy self-opening is as effective, to say the least, as the grimmest wrestling for a result. But it would be dangerous to assume from that that no tapasya and no endeavor is needful for that might very well mean inertia. I have seen too 
that very often a long tapasya with doubtful results prepares the moment of grace and the spontaneous downflow all which seem to be contradictions but are not in a whole view of things what x says about tapasya is of course true if one is not prepared for labor and tapasya control of the mind and vital one cannot demand big spiritual gains for the mind and vital will always find tricks and excuses for prolonging their own reign imposing their likes and dislikes and staving off the day when they will have to become obedient instruments and open channels of the soul and spirit grace may sometimes bring undeserved or apparently undeserved fruits but one can't demand grace as a right and privilege for then it would not be grace then of course labor finishes and one is in assured possession so tapasya of one kind or another is not avoidable from the mother true love and consecration lead much quicker to the divine than an arduous tapasya 26th april 1937